This year, five teachers were invited on board NASA's P-3B aircraft to fly at 500 meters above the glaciers of Greenland with Operation Icebridge, a six-year mission to study Arctic and Antarctic ice. Two teachers from Greenland, two from Denmark, and one from the U.S. were given the opportunity to see polar research firsthand and then take that experience back to their classrooms. First impressions, you know, the, of course the views. Uh, just, you know, everywhere you looked, uh, just these spectacular views. A terrain that is, that is very foreign. You know, I grew up in northwestern Pennsylvania, and of course I've seen snow before, but never the glacial terrain uh, that, that you see on one of these flights. Being an ice bridge flight, first you get the surprise that you're allowed to do a lot of things. We're allowed to go around and look at all the researchers' work. We're allowed to talk to them. We're even allowed to go out in the cockpit as long as we don't bother anyone too much. That's the biggest surprise. That was takeoff. This is about the most exciting thing I've done for a long time. The next one is that it's a bit tough. You need to uh, be able to grab onto something when you come into the air holes. You need to be prepared for some turbulence and for a bit of air sickness if you are not too strong. And you have to eat and you have to drink a lot because eight, nine hours on a flight is a long time. I say it's an incredible experience to see the ice from above and the mountains and flying with these incredible pilots going very low over the glaciers, going very close to the mountains. So that has been a fantastic experience to see how such professional people can, can do their work and talking to the scientists and feel their enthusiasm towards these subjects. I don't know what I really thought would be there, but when you see it, there's actually nothing. It's like a completely white desert. I can see there's nothing. No life, no tree, no animal, nothing. Just flat ice. But then when you get to the edges, it gets uh, much more interesting. You have mountains and you have the crevasses. I think for me the crevasses was the defining moment. When you are looking down into the crevasses and you're imagining how would it be if I was down there walking on the backpack, maybe a ski, <laughs> could I manage, could I pass there? The teachers took advantage of a day on the ground to travel to the terminus of the Russell Glacier, where they were able to touch the ancient ice and sample the glacier's meltwater. While the teachers stayed back a safe distance from the glacier's calving front, two hikers from a different group provided a sense of scale as they got dangerously close to the wall of ice. I've spent 20, 22 years, 23 years teaching about glaciers and teaching our science classes and where we've talked about you know, erosion and weathering due to uh, glaciation. But I've never seen it until today, until the flight. And I think that makes you a better educator. I think it makes you a better, better communicator of, of the science. Peter Gross has already shared his experiences with his students back in Denmark and plans to incorporate scientific concepts from Operation Icebridge into his future physics classes.